Hello, this is Justin Williams with the Wolfpacker Podcast. I'm joined today, as always, with co-host and editor of thewolfpacker.com, Matt Carter. And today, I know you've gotten accustomed, the listeners have gotten accustomed to my normal promos, promoting our YouTube channel, promoting our podcast, reminding you to subscribe, rate, and review, which you should definitely still do. But we do have a little bit new information to share with you today. As I'm sure many many of you know, the Wolfpacker has new digs, new website, new host site, On3. The Wolfpacker has joined the On3 network. Now, that doesn't change a whole lot. You still have got Matt Carter. You still got me as a contributor, podcast host. Of course, Matt Carter is the main cell there. Why wouldn't you want to read his work? We've already seen some of the comments rolling in, all the people coming over to On3, you know, saying it like it is. Matt Carter's the best in the biz covering the NC State beat, football recruiting, basketball recruiting. He He's truly the best. So if you want the best NC State information on everything Wolfpack Sports, head over to On3 right now. Right now, they're doing one year of premium subscription for just one buck, a dollar. I mean, there's really, I don't even think there's dollar stores anymore, Matt. I don't think you can really get anything in this life anymore for just a dollar. And I know for sure you can't get anything here in the Bay Area for a dollar. So, Matt, (laughs) this is like a deal of a lifetime. I'm going to give you the floor here because... You've been in Durham at Komen Publishing headquarters with all the action going on, the transition. So, you know, how's the new site so far? It looks beautiful. I've looked on it on desktop, on mobile. It's such a better looking website than what we previously had. So I think our our audience is going to really like this. If you haven't already, go over to thewolfpacker.com. But Matt, just tell tell us a little bit about On3 and the switch and just kind of everything that's that's happened here. Yeah, I think the first thing people need to understand is, is just the switch of networks, okay? The Wolfpacker is still the Wolfpacker. If you were to type in the Wolfpacker.com, like you have been doing for the past 20 years, it's going to take you to our site, and it's going to be on three. Um, so, if you, you know, if that's been your bookmark, then you're fine. But if you're, um, if you're looking for us and you had not found us yet, it's the Wolfpacker.com. It's the where we are, and it'll take you right to our new uh, network on on three. And yeah, you know, this this was really an easy decision. I'll be blunt about it. And uh, nothing bad about the people at Rivals or anybody over there. We, we had great experiences there, but this was just an easy decision. It's just the division of of on three is unmatched. Um, the passion of those involved with on three is unmatched. The ambition is off the charts. Um, we're lucky enough to be one of the first to make the move. We will, um, I'm confident within a couple of years time, you're going to see a powerhouse network and, um, you're going to see a lot of people wishing that they were on all three, right? It's going to be the, the destination. And we were lucky to be, to grab a spot at a seat at the table early. Um, so, you know, we're very excited. You're going to love the database when it's finished. It's mind blowing what they're doing with the database. Uh, right now, what you see is just the basics. It's going to blow you away when you see everything. They're going to even have a um, prediction model, which is crazy. That kind of, you know. Um, so they, they're gathering information left and right. It's still a working process, so just be patient while it fills out. We'll provide you the content, great premium content. Um, we're gonna. Um, we've got some more help coming. As, as if you read a letter from Stu Coleman, who we started publishing the Wolfpacker over 40 years ago, and he kind of talked about why on three was the move. Um, you, you saw in that letter that we got some help coming. Sammy Batten been covering football recruiting forever in the state of North Carolina. He's agreed to help us out. And, uh, we got some more help coming. Um, we're talking to people. Um, I'll peel the curtain back a little bit and tell you we talked to a person today about potentially helping out. So there's still more plans. Um, it gives us better resources. It gives us a better home. It gives us a better um, everything. And, so, and you're right. It's a box. I mean, that's the best part about it, right? You get to see this for a dollar. And so, like, while you're watching us kind of go through this, 
you know, little hiccups and the growing pain till we get to where we want to be, it's only costing you a dollar, one dollar. That's it. That's it. I mean, that's, you, know, you can't pay it in cash, unfortunately. You have to pay it, pay it you know, via debit or credit or online account. But yeah, it's just a single dollar. Um, yeah, trust me. You're right. You're not going to get that more. Uh, you're not going to get that anywhere else. And it's going to be worth the price. And I would say that the un- unbelievable response uh, from people coming over to the new site, it probably beat my expectations. Um, been very humbling. Uh, we know we got a lot of hard work to do. Uh, we're going to try our best to build that community up. But it's off to a good start. And uh, we're very excited. I mean, you know, Justin knows me. I'm not meant to excite him. Excitable, I guess you could say, but uh, only, only when NC State loses are you ha- glass half full. Yeah, uh, but I had a sleepless night Saturday and Sunday, just pumped up about about this move. So, I, you know, we wish we could have told you earlier, but their contract obligations, and you know, we had to fulfill our agreement with rivals, which we were always going to do, and uh, we did it as well as we could. We were never going to stop providing great coverage of NC State athletics no matter where we are because we believe in a high standard of, of reporting and content. But um, this is our number one goal is to make the Wolf Packer the best side it can be. And it's going to be the best side it can be if it's on home three. Well said, Matt. And I promise we're going to jump into some NC State, Florida State football preview here in just – one second, but just a couple other things about On3. I will say the editorial staff at On3, all NC State grads too. So if you're a big Wolfpack fan, you like supporting fellow Wolfpackers, I'm an NC State grad, Matt's an NC State grad, Ryan Tice, our managing editor, he's in there in the room with uh, Matt right now listening to the podcast live. He's such a big Wolfpacker. He's also an NC State grad. So come support fellow Wolfpackers. We're going to keep doing all the great work that we've that you've known us to do all this time. Now it's just going to be on on three. So go over to the wolfpacker.com. Take out that credit card. You'll spend a buck. That's, that's an easy one to explain to the wife or the girlfriend. I know my girlfriend hates it when I subscribe to new publications and everything, but if I explained it was just a dollar, then I don't think she'd be that mad. So anyways, Matt, let's go ahead and start talking about some football, which is why everyone is here to begin with. And again, remember, subscribe, rate, and review our YouTube channel and our podcast, wherever you listen to us, Apple, Spotify, Google Play. Um, Big game coming up for the Wolfpack. Four games remaining in the regular season. Florida State coming up. A tough road out in Tallahassee. 4.30 p.m. Eastern time, which is kind of weird for the Wolfpack considering NC State's been in prime time here is... Pretty much the entire season. I think there was maybe one other game that started at four, the Louisiana Tech game. Um, But before we get into the nitty-gritty of this particular matchup, I think we should address the big news from last night, Matt. The college football playoff rankings, the first college football playoff rankings came out. The the committee released its first results. Uh, Spoiler alert, Georgia number one, Alabama number two. Um, That shouldn't surprise anybody, but what may have surprised some people is that NC State came in at number 19. Um, so surprising, in fact, that I had to text my fellow co-host here, Matt Carter, when it was coming out, which I don't... Look, I just want to say, Matt, I do not blame you one bit for not watching that college football playoff ranking show. It is a complete waste of time until they unveil the rankings, but you know what? I was at my day job. I was bored. I was listening to it as it was going on while I was doing my work. So, Matt... What do you make of this number 19 ranking? It seems to me that the committee really values quality wins, which NC State doesn't necessarily have you know, elite quality wins, but they have a handful of good, solid wins against ACC competition mm-hmm. thus far. And if you look at NC State's losses thus far, they really haven't been bad, and I think the committee uh, echoed that sentiment by putting the Wolfpack at number 19. What did you make of the ranking? I was surprised. Uh, full disclosure, I completely forgot. I was so immersed into the uh, Dave Dorn radio show taping uh, that I was listening in on, and 
Uh, by the way, you can get a complete recap on on three if, if you didn't catch the radio show or don't have time to catch the radio broadcast of the radio show. Or if you're like Justin Williams, living in San Francisco, uh, and you don't have uh, the local radio station, you know, just go to on three for one dollar. You get every single recap of the Dave Dorn one radio show available to you. See, look at that uh, work ethic that you get if you go over to On3. Matt missed the college football playoff ranking show because he was covering the Dave Doran radio show. Now, if that's not a good excuse, I don't know what is. Because he, cert- he was working. I know that for sure. Yeah. And so uh, I was surprised at 19. I wasn't surprised they got ranked because I thought um, I, th- I would give this for the, play- the playoff committee gets crapped on a lot, right? And probably probably some of it they deserve. I do think when you look at those that, you know, have the microphone to do the crapping on, um, you know, those people are always sympathetic towards the group of five. It's kind of the popular thing to do. And uh, and a lot of those are voters in 38 people. And, uh, you know, their poll is, is very much based on preconceived notions of how this season is going to be in the preseason. Uh, I know a lot of those voters wish they didn't have to do a preseason poll. They'd rather start it up after like three or four weeks. But the reality is if you have a starting point and you tend to adjust your ranking based on the starting point and, you know, NC State's starting point wasn't high and then it lost to Mississippi State on the road, and Mississippi State didn't have a high starting point. Well, with the committee, they see a Mississippi State team that beat Texas A&M, that beat um, – Kentucky. Yep. And beat NC State. So they're not punishing NC State for losing on the road to Mississippi State. They think that's a pretty good, uh, a pretty good loss. And, um, and they're not going to punish NC, you know, when NC State loses to Miami, it's again, you have to reflect on that point where they were in the polls. Posters were looking at Miami as a two and four team. Playoff committee looking at uh, NC State lost to Mississippi State. Well, Mississippi State beat Kentucky and they beat Texas A&M. That's a good team. All right, they lost to Miami. Well, Miami just beat Pittsburgh, and we got Pittsburgh at number twenty-five, and Miami four and four, and they played a hell of a schedule. We're not going to punish NC State well, for losing. Plus, that. the playoff committee is not going to hurt you too much for losing to a conference opponent on the road by one point. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what Power 5 conference that is. It's not going to ding anybody that much for that type yeah, of loss. Unless it's like you're losing to Kansas. Yeah, that's yeah. a different animal. Right? Yeah. But when you're losing to a team that's now 4-4 four and four, and you look at that team's four losses and you see a lot, I mean, a lot of explanations there. So um, I think I applaud the committee for saying we're not punishing NC State for losing two games to two decent teams, if not one pretty good team in Mississippi State um, that's capable of beating a lot of teams and, like you said, losing by a point at Miami. So, um, so I think the fact that NC State doesn't have the, you know, marquee win, Clemson, Louisville, kind of your best wins right now, probably why they're you know, 19 instead of maybe higher up in the teams, um, which they were previously. I would also yeah. say the 19 ranking tells me that the committee looks at the win over Clemson better when NC State did it than maybe when Pittsburgh did it because Clemson suffered a lot of injuries you know, beyond that NC State yeah. game to the point where they're a really different team. NC State played them at near you know, full strength. I mean, I know they still had their own injuries, but it was that game where they were really starting to suffer all these injuries that they have. Yeah. Yeah, and so um... – yeah, I think I think it's really for NC State to continue moving up. It's going to be incumbent. Of course, got to be Wake Forest. So that's the uh, yeah. one opponent really left that had a lot of value, probably in the committee eyes. And you know, maybe UNC and Syracuse and Florida State are kind of viewed in respectable lights. But uh, um, you know, I applaud the committee for looking at the body of work. I, they get a lot of crap. And I'm sure they're not very articulate in some of their answers, and it may be offensive to some, but, you know, everybody was on Cincinnati for being sick. I give Cincinnati credit. They, they work Notre Dame on the road, but what else? You know, and I know it's stacked against a group of five teams. What else can they do other than schedule four good non-conference games? But, 
reality, I'm afraid. Cincinnati will be benefiting that from that in the very near future when they're in the Big 12. So, um, and then they'll be happy as clam about the whole thing, right? So, um, it is what it is. So, My last... I, I like to... Oh, go ahead. I'm going to tell you, hey, look at the committee. It's not like they just went all in on brand name. They had undefeated Oklahoma at number eight, which is, hey, that's right where they should be. I watched that Oklahoma team suck against Kansas. So, yeah. Um, I got no. I, I applaud them. I think Boo Corgan's on the committee too, right? The NC State AD. He is, yeah. And and I I mean I'm with you, Matt. I think the committee they take a lot of heat, um, sometimes undeservedly, because I think sometimes media personalities take out their frustration on the NCAA or the college the model of college football on the committee. Obviously there are powerful voices on that committee, but they are capable of making good I mean, I think if you look at the top twenty five that the committee just put out compared to the most recent AP top twenty five, I'd agree with the the CFP one more. Because I I mean I do think that in reality, if you're gonna if, if it's more of like a power ranking, then I think NC State really is a top twenty team in the country, even though like the AP poll, if you lose to anybody, it's almost automatically you're gonna drop in the poll. It doesn't it doesn't matter what the loss is. It just depends on, you know, if it's a really bad loss, you'll drop out of the rankings versus dropping six spots automatically for, you know, like NC State dropped out of the poll automatically for losing by one point on the road at Miami, you know, where maybe that wasn't deserved. So, um, last the other thing, thing, too, is it, it's like, I think an AP voter would be like, yeah, maybe that loss to Mississippi State wasn't as bad as we first thought, right? But they're not going to go retroactively fix the fact that they would drop. I don't mean. I don't know if NC State was ranked when they played Mississippi State. I don't. I think they were right on the cusp. NC State was ranked twenty four, and yeah, NC State was barely ranked. Mississippi State wasn't ranked. Mississippi State, I think, was like twenty four. Twenty. They replaced NC State in the poll once they won, or they were like at the top of the receiving votes. And then they went on and, and beat uh, yeah. they beat Texas A and M, right? Yeah, well, they lost to Memphis, I believe. They lost to Memphis. They lost, um, yeah, yeah. And then they fell out, and then they had their quality wins. So, I, I think the thing with um, it's like it's a week to week deal with the voter, and they they don't have the ability to go back and retroactively look and say, you know what, I was too hard on NC State when they dropped because Mississippi State is doing better. It's just a week to week deal. And that was the benefit of what the committee had, is they get a large body of work. Um, to say, you know, yeah, you know, we know you guys have Oklahoma rated highly, but last we check, they went a four quarter battle with the Kansas team that they had no business being in a one quarter battle with, much less a four quarter battle with. So, so let's get to Florida State. I know that's what a lot of State yeah, fans. Well, la- the last thing I wanted to say about the college football playoff ranking was that I don't think that Miami game made a difference at all in NC State's placement. If, if they won that game, NC State's not ranked that much higher because they're still not going to be ranked above Mississippi State in that poll. Obviously, head-to-heads were really important to the committee. But yes, let's talk about this specific matchup, Matt. Last year, this was NC State's arguably easiest conference win. It was a home game. Florida State was without star quarterback Jordan Travis, who had suffered an injury the week prior in that game. NC State was in the midst of its late season, kind of just automatically, you know, finding ways to win in different ways uh, mode. Uh, I think this was like second game of their uh, five-game win streak or four-game win streak to end last season. Either way, they had a backup, and Chuba Purdy, who actually – uh, entered the transfer portal today. But this is going to be a different Florida State team, Matt. Uh, I think it's going to be a much more competitive Seminoles team, and it's going to be in Tallahassee, which is never an easy place to play. So what do you make of this Florida State team? Um, did you watch any of that Clemson game last week? I watched some of it. The final score is deceiving. You know, Florida State really had Clemson on the ropes in that game, was up three with four minutes to go in the fourth quarter ends up losing 30 to 20 on the bad beat of last week where uh, mm-hmm. uh, Florida State did the lateral you know last second desperation play to try to find the end zone try to find a way to beat Clemson 
fumble that Clemson gets a late game touchdown to end up covering the spread in the most BS way possible. But Matt, uh, this Florida State team is should be coming into this game with some confidence, right? Absolutely. I mean, they said, you know, we wrote Florida State off when they lost to Jacksonville State from the FCS and then just were obliterated by Wake Forest um, on the road and quite frankly fell behind pretty good to Louisville before they had a nice second half, as everybody seemed to do against Louisville this year. It made that a, a one possession game. Um, and then they won three straight. They beat Syracuse on a, a walk-off field goal. That's not that's looking not Syracuse is just looking better and better each week, right? Um, really played a nice game at UNC. I did watch a good chunk of that game, and they they got off to a slow start, for a couple of possessions, and then after that, they just dominated the last three quarters or so of that football game. Uh, and then they had a, a nice setup with Dubai, followed by a game against UMass, which is basically meant they had a two-week bye. Um, and then they got Clemson, and they, they did. They played Clemson close. Now, I think Clemson's going to have that just about every ACC game this year. That's just how they're built. They're so good defensively. They can win a lot of games. They're so bad offensively, they can't blow out anyone. So Clemson's bound to play everybody in somewhat of a close game. But, you know, Dave Dorn kind of alluded to it. They seem to have found their identity. They've simplified some things on defense. they got a great pass rusher on defense. Um, and their physical team on offense. they got a good group of running backs. Maybe. You make a case they have the best running back group in the ACC now especially when you throw in Jordan Travis, a quarterback. So, um, you know, that has been the case. I mean, this game, it almost feels kind of simple. Of, you know, look at what Florida State has done. Um, and the game they were good or competitive in, or one, they ran for at least 200 yards. And that lopsided loss to Wake Forest, they ran for only 91 yards in the game against Clemson, which as you said, is a deceiving score. But a game where they struggled offensively, they only ran for 65 yards. Um, so, and they finished that Clemson game with just 241 yards of total offense. This is a team that is at its best when it runs the football. Um, it's not a high-powered passing attack that we've seen this year. Uh, they've only thrown for over 200 yards and three of their eight games, um, obviously not a lot. So they, they lean heavily on running the football. It tends to be NC State's forte, right? Stopping the run. Little Gotta wrap up, wrap up and tackle, yeah. though. Yeah. Little struggle against Louisville. And yeah, Florida State's real good at uh, getting yards after contact. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we, we just don't hear a lot of, about them a lot, but you know, Sean Tucker at Syracuse is still in the headlines. And you got, you know, here at NC State, we tend to focus on the one, two at Bam Knight, Ricky Person. But Corbin, the Florida State, uh, so you don't pay for a thousand yards and he's averaging about seven and a half yards a carry. So, you know, right now, you can make a case he's the first team all ACC running back. And Trayson Ward, uh, would be starting for a lot of teams. And <laughs> he's having been over seven yards a carry and 440 yards rushing. And then you got Jordan Travis as a third third uh, threat back there, kind of another Malik Cunningham type threat. Um, a different offense, Dave Dorn said, but similar speed and athleticism in the backfield. So um, it's going to be incumbent upon NC State to fit up the runs and then work against the playoffs and pass. Be disciplined against those playoffs and passes uh, that that you can get burned on when you're so easy to stop the run. Matt, you mentioned NC State's running back duo of Ricky Person and Bam Knight, and you know I think moving forward on all these podcasts, I'm just going to say, you know what? It would be, it would be a nice week for that running back duo to get going. Maybe just speak it to an existence because I feel like I've said that now for the past two or three weeks and just just hasn't, just hasn't. So, uh, you know, if NC State can find a way to maybe outrush Florida State, I know that sounds preposterous sitting here a few <laughs> days before 
this uh, this weekend matchup against one of the better rushing attacks in in, in the conference. Um, but if they could find a way to maybe outrush Florida State, NC State will be looking in great shape. Now, I'm not predicting that by any means because the rush attack on NC State's end has had its struggles. We'll see if they can get it right this weekend against Florida State. As for this Seminoles offense against Wolfpack defense matchup, you're right, Matt. It, you know, NC State's run defense has been stol- solid, at least schematically, having men in position to make plays consistently throughout the year. And when they were at full strength, there weren't any of these tackling issues, which you kind of s- started to see rear its ugly head last weekend against Louisville. Now, of course, NC State got some breaks, buckled down in the red zone, and was able to keep Louisville out of the end zone, which meant that the final score was a successful result. And I, I do tip my cap to NC State's defense last weekend because it did, it, it had to make those plays. It had to buckle down once Louisville got into Wolfpack territory to keep Louisville off the scoreboard. But Louisville did outgame NC State in that game quite significantly. And that's not a winning recipe that you want to replicate week in, week out. So, you know, when you look at this game as a whole, I think, look, this is a younger Florida State team that has talent, that, you know, went off to a rough start this year, is kind of carrying a chip on its shoulder, has some confidence now, but it's still a team that's going to be prone to making mistakes and beating itself. And that's where NC State really has to prove it's the superior team here, it's the more experienced team here, it's the team that has more to play for. I know it kind of sounds like a broken record. We say it every week, but limiting penalties, winning the turnover battle, not beating yourself with some of these play calls, getting into advantageous situations on offense, not you know every drive you go out there getting into third and long situations. Move the ball on first and second down. Make it easier for yourself to convert those third and sometimes fourth down situations. If NC State can play, Dave Doran's favorite term here, complementary football, then I think it has no problem with the Seminoles. But Florida State can still put on a, you know, NC State can still play a good game here, and this can still be a four-quarter battle if Florida State's coming in with confidence and plays its game. NC State passed the test against Malik Cunningham, a similar dual-threat quarterback in the ACC. Jordan Travis, I like his athleticism a little bit more. I think Malik Cunningham might be a better passer than Jordan Travis, but Travis is very, very quick. And we'll see if this NC State lineup that, you know, was able to find success against Cunningham with Drake Thomas at middle linebacker and Vi Jones on the outside able to use his athleticism to keep Malik Cunningham at bay. We'll see if that can be a winning recipe again this weekend against Jordan Travis, who, you know, again, we talked about Malik Cunningham and Devin Leary being some of the more underrated quarterbacks in the ACC. Jordan Travis also has a claim at that. Um, you know, with some of the numbers he's been producing now that Florida State's starting to win some games. What do you, what do you see from the NC State offense? Where can it take advantage of Florida State's defense? Because you look at the Florida State's track record, at least, you know, I'm not looking at their total average yards allowed um, on paper here, Matt, but I am looking at their, you know, just their pure results, holding the Wake Forest team to 35 points. I know, you know, 35 points doesn't sound like a defensive A performance, but when you're playing Wake Forest, that's pretty good. Uh, they have 25 points against UNC. I didn't watch that game specifically. UNC might have tripped over itself sometimes. But UNC still got a pretty good offense. To hold them to 25 is still pretty good. So what what is Florida State's defense looking like on paper? Where can NC State take advantage of it? Well, just look at the number. They've been pretty good stopping the pass. Um, well, the question is, is that a byproduct of who they have faced? Uh, in recent weeks. They've been good at getting pressure on the quarterback. Uh, they're almost averaged about three sacks a game. As mentioned, they may have the best pass rusher in the ACC. Uh, and Jermaine Johnson, who transferred from Georgia, he's got eight sacks in eight games. Um, he's also got 11 tackles for loss. You know, he had the big strip sack fumble recovery for a touchdown against Clemson to put Florida State in the lead in the fourth quarter. Uh, I think at that point it was uh, maybe it was 17-13 when he did it, or maybe it was 17-14. I can't remember. I think it was one of those two. Um, so they will get pressure on you, and statistically, you don't see a whole lot of passing yards um, against Florida State. But probably what's more impressive is not a you know the last three games, not a necessarily a lot of um, high passing percentages, if you will. Yeah. 
four games, really. Syracuse was just 13 of 23, passing the ball for 150 yards. Sam Howell was just 17 of 32 for 203 yards, so barely over 50%. Uh, UMass is UMass, obviously, but uh, Clemson 19 of 31 for 189 yards. Yeah, uh, yeah you're, you're not seeing high completion percentage. You're not seeing a lot of passing yards. I did just mention a bunch of teams that uh, Syracuse wants to run the football. Their quarterback is not a strong arm quarterback. He's a uh, you know lead manage the offense and get into the running game himself type UNC. Right, at that point in the season, at least, they only had one receiver. You shut down Josh Downs, you shut down the receiving game for them. Uh, UMass is UMass. And obviously, there's a lot of confidence issues right now, Clemson at quarterback and in the passing game. So that kind of what stood out. They have not given up a lot of passing yards. Um, they have given up some yards on the ground. Not a mind-blowing amount, but they have given up some yards on the ground. You know, they held Louisville in check. And they really did a great job against Notre Dame in the running game. So Wake and Cherokee and UNC had more success. Uh, Virginia, uh, Clemson for them had pretty good success considering their offense this year. I was but, just um, about to say, 190 yards for DJ Uyangalale sounds like a pretty good performance for him this year. Well, really, 188 yards passing is pretty good. Um, yeah, uh, Russian, I should say, for Clemson, pretty good. But, you know, they've only given up 400 yards in total offense just three times in eight games this year. Uh, so they, they're going to make NC State, I think, earn it. And, uh, you know, they got to account for Jermaine Johnson when he's on the, on, the, on the field. It would really help if you could run the football for the first time pretty well against a Power 5 team this year. Uh, that would help. Would be nice. Protect- would be nice. Yeah, protect, protect the football. Um, yeah, but I think the odds are pretty decent. This might be a little bit lower scoring game. It could end up being a, a score similar to Louisville. Just remember, the final was 28-13, but you and I and anybody who watched knows that that was not really a 28-13 to game. That was more like a 20-17 to game that kind of slipped away from Louisville late. So, um, it's gonna be. It, it's gonna. It, 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 I could. I could see this being a bit of a defensive game on paper. Like I, every time I think I see something on paper, it ends up being the opposite. So, uh, but that's kind of how I see it on paper. NC State a three point favorite in this game. I would say that's pretty, pretty, pretty spot on. I would. I would advise caution for those that are interested in wagering in the Wolfpack because that, look, NC State could very well cover that game just like it did last week against Louisville in similar fashion, but uh, road games for NC State, just you, they always have to make you nervous, and you got to go earn them no matter who it's against, and this Florida State team is not a pushover. you got to go into this game ready to take care of business. We'll see if NC State is up for the task this Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, ACC Network game, right, Matt? Correct. ACC Network. We will be there. We will be there, too. I should add, add, we will be there. Benefit of being on on three, you can go to Florida State. Hey, speak for for yourself. You will be there. You will be there. Matt will be there. Enjoy Tallahassee, sir. Um, Yeah. I will will enjoy my living room couch, watching it on ACC. Look, take care of business this week, NC State. Maybe I, I don't know what the I don't know what next week's college football schedule looks like, but maybe just maybe that NC State Wake Forest game could be a college game day type atmosphere if both of those teams can take care of business this week going into next week. With Wake Forest being a top ten team, NC State potentially sliding up to a top fifteen team if they can. Eh, they won't. They won't slide up to top fifteen, but you know, like sixteen. A lot of losers for them to get up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Take care of it. I, I hope the Deeks and uh, and the Pack both take care of business this weekend. Obviously, I think the listeners of the podcast know Wake Forest playing Carolina non conference game, so you don't have a reason to vote or you don't have a reason to, to root for North Carolina. You can still pull for the Deeks against the Tar Heels, and it won't hurt NC State's chances at all. So, anyways, that's gonna do it for this podcast. Remember, 
We gave you a lot to do after this podcast. You've got some homework. Remember your homework assignments. But it's fun homework. Go to on3.com, or excuse me, thewolfpacker.com. It is part of the On3 network now. For just $1, you can get premium subscription for a whole year. You can read all of the great stuff that Matt has to say. I'm going to be pitching in some premium stuff here soon, I would imagine. Ryan's already got his weekend or his weekly wrestling column. You've got Sammy Batten coming in, bringing in just this abundance of knowledge of North Carolina football recruiting. So it is a great, great deal. Use that. or There's no promo code. You just go do it. Dollar. You get a free year, basically. It's it's not free. It's dollar, but basically free. Go subscribe to our podcast, Apple, Spotify, Google Play, and also remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We thank you for all of our followers. Give this video a thumbs up. Drop a comment. Follow us on social media, at the Wolfpacker, our main account. You can follow me personally, at Justin H. Will, and give us a like on Facebook, NC State Wolfpack, on thewolfpacker.com. So for Matt Carter, this is Justin Williams, and this has been the Wolfpacker Podcast.